Hey everybody, welcome back to The Build Show. Steve Basic Architect here. I'm out at the Ranch Remodel. As you can see, we got some pretty exciting stuff happening here. We got some paint colors and stuff initially going on, but we have this beautiful pile of fur in front of me. Well, what does that mean? It means that we're trimming out windows today, all right? So let's just take a quick look, kind of refresh our memory about what's happening here. So each of these gets made they're tied to a window that's tied on the window schedule. This is our head casing. It's a standard one by with a one by cap. You can see we have that little bit of a reveal that's going around there. These are all pre-applied and connected at the shop, shipped out here. You can see here we have the accompanying sill that goes to that window. The horns are already cut out for so not quite plug and play. There's probably a little bit of maneuvering there, but the heavy lifting is done. These are all pre-finished with one coat. They'll get installed and then they'll get cleaned up, get that finished coat applied. But again, all this stuff is done in the shop with really good precision. All the windows and doors were measured. They come out, we have the sills, we have the head casing. Over here you can see each and every window has the jams and head casing already constructed. They're already screwed together. We have a temporary holder at the bottom there that is holding this stuff all in place so that this can get installed as the window surround. After you take that sill off, it'll sit down on top of those sills. The head casing will get applied and we'll have a nice window trim. I'm gonna jump over here and I'm just gonna show you the extent that traditional woodworks goes to, to ensure that things are done right, accurately, and very efficiently. So I have here a whole set of shop drawings, but you can see here, basically each of the windows is drawn in elevation. Dave came out, he measured the rough openings, drew all these up so the guys in the shop knew what size to make everything. They have all the horns, everything drawn in that matched my original drawings, which shows the original intent that we had approved with the client. So I get it approved with the client. I send it off to Dave. Dave makes shop drawings, guys in the shop, pre-package the units, pre-make the jams and head, and then they get installed. Let's go look at one of these being installed. All right. So we're out here in one of the bedrooms. Now, this is a whole house remodel. So we did some additions, some rooms just got remodeled. This is one of the rooms that just got remodeled. So there was an existing window opening here. We had uh, sent the size to Shuko. Shuko made a window to fit that. This consequently is a masonry opening from the outside. But uh, we're here to talk about the trim package. We talked about it out there, how it gets delivered. You can see the sill gets installed. We have the horns here setting out. It's gonna get ready to receive that casing. We have that three piece jam unit and head unit here that gets installed. That's all properly shimmed, properly installed. We got the guys holding it in place there. They got some placeholders here, um, keeping it all nice and level. You know, we're just gonna wait on that casing and head casing. A Couple of things I wanted to point out is, I mean, look at that fur against Remember we talked about these windows. These are UPVC windows with a foil finish. And this is real wood fur. But man, you're gonna be hard pressed to tell in a, a year or so that these aren't the same things. Remember, quick up, uh, reminder about the windows. These are European tilt turn, right? We got that turn feature. You can see everything designed with the intent just misses. We got that tilt in version. So that's basically how you vent the window or vent the room, get ventilation air in here. So if you look here, we have the window label. We got the windows from a company, European Architectural Supply. They're basically a Shuko window broker here in the US. I do probably a little bit more than half my projects go through EAS because they're superb windows. We can pretty much get any window size we want, colors, um, wood faux finishes on the inside. We can get real wood windows, um, different price point, but they will make them. But look at these numbers, 
All right, we have a solar heat gain of 5.4, a U factor of 0.13, um, and a visual transmittance of 0.71. So the 0.71 is basically how much of a sunglass effect does the clear glass have, right? So the lower that number gets, the more these are sunglasses. So 100 is basically clear glass, no film, see-through. But 0.71 is a really good number. When you're dealing with very efficient windows, you want to make sure that that number stays above that 0.5 markish somewhere there. But we're able to get exceptional U value here by uh, still maintaining that 0.71. You know, I showed you that tilt version. These also have that tilt version or turn in version so that when you turn it in, I get that nice, easy cleaning feature here. We have what's called the sash limiter. Sash limiter on these windows keeps that window from folding over and denting the jam. That's as far as that will go. So, and the other thing to point out is, again, we have that faux fur finish on the outside, or on the inside. On the outside here, this isn't quite black. It's called anthracite gray, which is a, a color I use all the time because a lot of clients just simply love it. So. It's kind of like that deep, uh, deep dark gray, not quite black, but right there. These have simulated divided lights, so we have spacers in between the mutton bars. They lock tight. You know, just can't wait. We're going to get that casing in, get that head put in here, and our windows will be all trimmed out. These guys are doing an exceptional job. Should look beautiful when we're done. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're down here in the studio. We're gonna look at just a couple of the quick details that we drew up for window and door trim. We were out there, we checked out some of those windows and the uh, trim that they're starting to install. You'd notice that it was all there on the job site. That vertical green fur is looking mighty fine. But let's take a quick peek here on uh, the instructions or the drawings that we put together for the general contractor. So here you can see really quick door elevation. I like to do my door elevations with a superimposed section across them. It just helps everybody understand, you know, what is rail, what is panel, handles, some of the trim around the wall here. I do also, you know, across the head and across the base. Now this house here, because we were going for that more contemporary feel, but warming it up by using the uh, vertical grain dug fur, everything is pretty simple square stock, we would call it. So the casings here, they're one by four, which is a three and a half inch casing by three quarters of an inch. It's just a square casing that comes down. We sit it on a plinth block. The plinth block is a five quarter, which means it's one inch thick. And the reason you do that is, is it gives you a little reveal here and it gives you a little reveal there, meaning that this is a bigger piece than the two pieces that are coming into it. So if there's any irregularities or any deficiencies in the way that the drywall or plaster was done, that you can put this larger block on there and this sits inside of that edge and this sits inside of the edge. So you have no real coinciding planes there so it makes for a little easier setup although it is more pieces it just you know it's arguably a little less time in putting that in because you don't have as much to coordinate there and trying to get this plane and that plane together at that one joint so and the plinth block here historically it offers there's a, a nice distinctive look to having those casings sitting up on the block there. Um, our baseboard is a simple one by six. It just comes into the side of that. Like I said, our jams are one by four. Our head casing is a one by four. So these two match, but in a way to delineate them and again, to take out that coplanar discrepancy that might occur there, you notice that we put a little head plate on. And that little head plate just sticks out about a half an inch in front of that. So it's the three quarters. It's a total inch and a quarter there. But that head plate goes pretty much across the door. 
gives it a nice distinctive look, but more importantly, it allows these two to work very well together in that you don't have that coplanar connection there. Um, like we talked about in the earlier video when we talked about the doors, the, all the doors were made by traditional woodworks up in Berwick, Maine. Beautiful fir doors. They have a square stick here, which simply means that you have the rail and the rail goes down to a panel. So you have a nice square shaker sticking there. There's no moldings, nothing. Just very sharp right angles. Gives it a nice contemporary look. And likewise, we tried to keep the whole door assembly very simple, very clean. Just some minor things like the plinth block and the little head plate there. Just enough to push it out so that there's a little distinction or distinguished look in the doors without being overwhelming with a series of trim. So best way to summarize it would probably be just a series of nice clean lines. Let the warm wood shine through and uh, make for a beautiful door arrangement. Um, for the windows here, you can see the windows are pretty much the same thing. We have our Shuko windows. We talked about those out there until turn windows. Um, here we have our standard one by four. It's a square casing. It comes down to a nice five quarter sill. So it's a little thicker than those casings. It goes a little bit beyond. Um, that five quarter there is, you know, a lot of times you'll see three quarter, but because these are the, the European Shuko style windows, there's a significant amount of window frame there. So we want to elevate a few components of the uh, window trim there to offer some competition to the heavier frames or just make it feel like it belongs. We don't want everything to be fragilely looking or have this fragile look as we go around the window. So beefing that up to the five quarter gives it a nice stern sill. Um, the one by four casing, the one by four head, and we have our same head plate there that we had on the door. We just repeated that on a window, so we have a nice cohesiveness in trim systems between windows and doors. Um, as we come to the sill, we have that five quarter. Now, one of the things I like to do, and especially because we were working in the wood shop, here's that five quarter sill, and you need to put some kind of apron under here so that you can cover, you know, the leading edge of the drywall there in the rough frame. Now, you notice here, it goes straight for that seven eighths of an inch, but then it tapers down and then comes in. So you can see there, we lose a quarter thickness and we get down to a half inch. And the reason I do that is when you're standing here and you're looking down at that sill, well, the beauty of having that tapered sill is it moves away from you, right? So you get the nice thick sill here, but as you look down that sill, that apron regresses towards the wall and it looks a little thinner there. So what it does is it allows the sill to be this very strong element in that window trim arrangement. And while the apron does exist, having that little taper on there allows for it to not necessarily disappear, but let's just say it kind of bows down to the, the window sill there in a status of hierarchy so that the window sill here becomes the most important part of that window trim assembly, as, as well as the head plate. We got these nice, strong horizontal lines going across the windows, and then everything else kind of pays homage to that, including that wooden apron. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. You know, we went out there, looked at some trim. We'll certainly go back out there when everything is done, and we'll do a recap and talk about how everything has come together and uh, look at its entirety. But until next time, thanks for joining us on the Build Show Network. A um, couple uh, housekeeping things. If you haven't gone to our newsletter and or haven't gotten our newsletter, go out there, get the newsletter, and subscribe to it. And uh, check out our videos. We all have some really good videos out there with my uh, colleagues, Matt, Jake, 
uh, Brent and uh, Wade, you know, I, I have a whole series of videos up there now. If you haven't checked those early ones out, um, I, I suggest you check them out. There's a bunch of good information there. And likewise, my colleagues are posting some really great stuff. I always look forward to watching their stuff. But enjoy. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Again, until next time, long live our buildings.